Now this one <clears throat> is a book produced in 2004. It's classic kits collecting the mod greatest model kits in the world from Airfix to Tamiya. Now it's not it's not a guide to how to collect kits. It's a fun book which treats you to a nostalgic look at the history of model kits from worldwide manufacturers over the last 75 years. Classic kits revisit our favourite model kits, whether they were tanks, ships, aircraft, spaceships or tractors. Now, it's not a history of model kits. It's basically a fun look at the collectible stuff that's out there. It's It looks at Airfix, Rebel, Monogram, Frog, Aurora, Esky, as I call it, Tamiya, Fujimi, Matchbox, Eagle War, Mattel and Italieri. Not only does this book allow you to compare and contrast different models and their historical development, and in some cases demise, classic kits also note the rare and the valuable, but then again, valuable tends to date the book. The this valuable stuff goes out of date, so I'd ignore that. So you can reevaluate the pieces you have stored away in your attic. It is a decent book, but it's not about any particular kit. It's an overview of the collectible stuff that you could find around the car boot sales. You used to get them in car boot sales. You used to get end of line stock as shops closed down in the 1980s. And into the 1990s, I can well remember buying the old Airfix 132 scale. Was it the Dodge Weapons Carrier? And the Dodge Command Car with the water bowser trailer for about a pound each. As shops closed down, they found stuff in the, in the, in the back the, the back storage areas and you could buy the stuff for next to nothing <clears throat> but now it has its own collecting field it has the likes of ebay it has specialist model auctions there's places where you can go where there's nothing but model kits for sale vintage model kits and in some cases you'll pay a fortune for them but if you're into collecting model kits then buy a copy of that it's classic kits collecting the greatest model kits in the world from airfix to tamiya so we'll have a look through this because it is really really well worth the money and again for a nostalgia point of view, there's plenty of stuff in here that the likes of you and me have built over the years when they were really, really cheap. Now, the kits that are in production that have been taken over by other companies, like I think I think Hella took on quite a lot of Airfix stuff, and I think um, was it uh, which other firm took over the Airfix 132 Dodge? It was anyway. Really good nostalgia trip. We'll have a look through it, so you can have a. And look at what was available back in the day. There's bound to be something in here that you recognise straight away. The classic box art for the Matchbox models. Built loads and loads and loads and loads of these Matchbox 176 scale kits. They were always issued in two colours, so in inverted commas, you didn't have to paint them, which you always did. I remember buying these when they were 75 pence each. Really good models they were. Uh, this one published at 20 quid. I bought it through the Military and Aviation Book Club many, many years ago, paid about 10 or 40. Um, so you have <coughs> history and development, the classic brands, genres, kit collecting, and the future. So you have the introduction to plastic kits, which is basically it's a similar thing to what was in the Airfix book, where plastic kits originated from. Then you have alphabetically accurate miniatures. Some of these companies will be known, some won't be. You have Airfix and the bits and pieces that they did. And again, as I've said, I can remember having them and the Chieftain Tank and the classic B-type bus. I remember building loads of them, loads of the fire engines, but I've never had the B-type bus in the World War One livery. That must be quite a rare thing. Had many a Airfix Spaceman, German infantry sets. So the really good artwork. Never had the VW Beetle, never had the Data Car, never had the Hovercraft, never had the Mark 1 Cortina. So the good thing about these were, these Airfix ones were in 132 scale, and what people used to do, they used to motorise them for, for scale electrics road, road racing ways. And you can probably buy these now as scale electric models rather than Airfix models. The control tower. I remember having that. That's the 
forward command post. Now, the forward command post, when you bought it, in double O scale, it came, the building, all of this was plastic model kit bits, but the base was a vac foam base, plastic base, and it was all moulded with all this on. So all of that is a moulded vac foam base. Now you can buy this kit brand new now from Afix, and for some reason, the vac foam base, which is the roadway and the bit that the building clips into with all this detail, that is no longer included in the kit, which is a shame, and I don't know why. So maybe there's been a bit of production difficulty with the vac foam bases. They also did the jungle outpost. Now I don't think that's available, but again, the base it's sitting on is a vac foam base. It was in a tan plastic. But as I say, you can buy the forward command post now, but it doesn't come with the base for all the bits to go on for some reason, which is a shame. Control tower, never ever built that. Again, pre-production artwork, EMT. EMT mainly did cars. I remember doing a few cars, but I can't remember what they were. A lot of this stuff <coughs> is now collectible. Aurora Plastics. Can't remember doing any Aurora Plastic stuff. And again, you got the classic Mr. Spock. The, this sort of thing has its own collectible field. Churchill Tank. Bandai. I can remember doing some Bandai ones, but they had, as far as I know, some of my Bandai models had clockwork motors in them. The classic dragon stuff. Eagle Wall, which was something to do with Eagle Comic. Now, I can remember having some of the little tiny ships, which were like 1-200 scale. I remember having some of the ships in the boxes that I bought from an antique fair about four or five years ago. There's an unusual one. Eagle Wall design a car. We designed your own car. I can remember the predominantly the ship ones. That, that's what I remember from Eagle. And you had Esky, which, considering how big a firm Esky was, there's only that about Esky. And that's it. You know, the Esky did more than the VW cable wagon, but it goes from Esky to Fuller, which is a shame, because they did more than that. And it goes on to the Foller, which I can't remember doing any of those. Frog, again, before my time, was Frog stuff. Quite some nice models in the Frog range, but before my time. And again, it has its own collecting field now. People pay a fortune for it. Fujimi, I don't remember them at all. Hasegawa, again, Hasegawa. There's just that on Hasegawa. Now, I can remember building masses and masses of model kits from Hasegawa. But it just wasn't that page, which is a shame. And you have obscure things like Hawk, and it features box art from Hawk, nothing from Hasegawa. Hysterex was mainly a figure company. Heller, which Heller, never, never impressed by the Heller stuff because the box art made the items look better than they were. They tended to lose something in the production. But I remember having them, the, the Chasseur Alpine, I can remember having them, but they the, the were never any good. <coughs> Impact, <coughs> Italieri, US Rangers Normandy, I'm pretty certain that's, I used a few of those boxes in my Omaha Beach model, which is somewhere on YouTube if you have a look for it. I'm pretty certain I used them, but I think the prices have gone up. You know, Johan, or Johan, Cleaway, Never heard of them. Lifelike. Lindbergh. The classic Matchbox. Built masses of these. Now that one there, if you do 135 scale World War II modelling, that is handy to use as a World War II staff car, if you can find it. The Citroen. Monogram. Spends a lot of time on monogram stuff. Nito. Never did any of those. Pyro. Now Pyro, I can remember in the 1980s buying a lot of uh, ships like Mayflower and things like that. And the Santa Maria by Pyro. That's all I can remember about them. Renwall. 
Revel. Revel. Never been impressed by Revel. Because what I find with Revel is the uh, the, the polythene plastic soldiers are very badly moulded and they don't look anything like the box art. So I've never really been impressed by Revel. They made some interesting stuff. Purdy's TR7, Cadillac, Rambo set, Submarine Kursk. Rosebud Kitmaster. Now if you look at that, Aerial Airflow, that's the original one by Kitmaster, which was later taken over by Airfix. So you can actually buy that as an Airfix kit, but not with the rider. The Aerial Arrow. So that became an Airfix kit. And I think a lot of these Kitmasters were taken over by Airfix. And you had the Skybirds and the classic Tamiya. I think everybody's built Tamiya. Then you have the magazines, some model layouts, which are Tamiya's own diorama showing the, the models in the range. The 1 16th radio controlled Tiger 1. I've got one of those, mine don't work. The German FAMO half track, released in 1989, never built that one. The figures. And genres, Airfix Old Bill and London Bus, Airfix mo Motor Vehicles, there's the Aerial Arrow which was a Kitmaster model, that's a, a modernish release of the MG which was in a box set with the, the Ford Escort and the Triumph TR6, that's a Mini that's never been reissued, that's one of the original ones. The old Matchbox Soft Plastic Soldiers, I can remember having masses of those. The Comet Miniatures, Dalek, Six Million Dollar Man, Planet of the Apes Treehouse, Bionic Repair Outfit by MPC, the Star Wars stuff which by Airfix, which I've never never built. The Lincoln Thunderbirds Fab One. And then there's a bit on kit collecting, which I think may now be obsolete. All the box art, the eagle sets. I can remember having one of those. Rampaging Scorpion, what you had, you had a base with a plastic scorpion and little cars and little people. That was a good kit. Revel, American Firefighters, that'd be a nice one. And ev every school seemed to have one of these, the Airfix Saturn rocket, and you could dismantle it into its various sections. And I think every school science department had one of these constructed. So yeah, so quite a lot of bits and pieces. Then you have the stuff that are currently available from uh, Poland, from Mirage Hobbies, Vickers Tanks, and there's some Soviet Union bits and pieces there. So yeah, so really, really, Good book, great nostalgia trip, classic kits, collecting the greatest model kits in the world from Airfix to